Hello and welcome back to Math and Tea, the show where we talk math and drink tea. I'm your host, Professor Joseph Van Hy. Recently on Facebook, I encountered one of the nerdiest groups I've seen in a while, and that's saying something. Mathematical theorems you had no idea existed, because they're false. It's full of statements that sound correct, even to many mathematicians, but they purposefully leave something subtle out of the mix. Many of them don't make great conversation pieces precisely because they're so technical, but they posted a great one the other day that got a lot of people talking and happens to deal with continued fractions, which are kind of my thing. So let's talk about a very reasonable sounding result that is nonetheless completely false. We will have two strings of equalities. First, 2 is equal to 2 divided by 3 minus 2. You can just check this by direct calculation. And since this is true, that 2 is equal to this expression, we can replace the 2 in the denominator with this expression. So we end up with 2 divided by 3 minus 2 divided by 3 minus 2. And we can do it again, and do it again, and do it again as many times as we like. Repeating infinitely, we arrive at this expression. Likewise, we also have that 1 is equal to 2 divided by 3 minus 1. Since this is true, we can replace the 1 in the denominator with 2 divided by 3 minus 1, and keep repeating and repeating and repeating until we get this. Since 1 and 2 are equal to the same infinitely nested fraction, they are, in fact, equal. Except, of course they aren't. 1 and 2 are not equal. Some part of this argument is wrong, even though it all looks correct. And what's wrong is at this stage, which I've highlighted in red. Now let me try to explain why, dramatically. So what you're saying is I can replace 2 by 2 divided by 3 minus 2. Yeah. I can do it twice. Sure. Three times. Fine. Ten times? Still good. A thousand times? A-okay. A million times? As many times as I want? Yeah, as many times as you want. Infinitely many times? Whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody said anything about infinity. That is most definitely, absolutely, completely not okay. So why is it doing something a finite number of times is okay, but infinitely many times is not? Well, part of it comes down to order of operations. When we see a big expression with a big but finite number of operations to take, we know that we can follow the rules of the orders of operation to simplify everything and eventually we'll arrive at an answer. So we might start with this expression. We simplify the 3 minus 2 to be 1, then we simplify 2 over 1 to be 2, then 3 minus 2 to be 1 again, and so on and so on, until we arrive back at the simplified answer of 2. And this works even if we do this a hundred million times. But when we have an infinite number of operations, suddenly we aren't guaranteed to get good results even if we do follow what seem to be the usual order of operations. In fact, there's an even bigger problem here in that none of these subtractions or divisions can be taken because any of them require already knowing the value of one of these infinite nested fractions, which, by the way, are known as generalized continued fractions. Here's a much simpler case. 1 plus negative 1 plus 1 plus negative 1 plus 1 plus negative 1 and so on. Now, there are a whole lot of sums to take here. Where do we start? Well, one way we could do it is to do every other sum, starting with the first. So we get 1 plus negative 1 plus 1 plus negative 1 plus, and so on. This just equals 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, and we'd probably say this is 0. But we could do every other sum starting with the second one, and we'd get 1 plus negative 1 plus 1 plus negative 1 plus 1, and so on, which is 1 plus a bunch of zeros, which is 1, and not 0. So for any expression involving an infinite number of operations, there's no guaranteed meaning to it. But that doesn't mean it's meaningless, we just have to imbue it with meaning, and do so carefully. The meaning we typically imbue to such fractions is to see what happens when we cut off the infinite tail of operations and just stop at a certain point. So we might start with 2, then 2 divided by 3, then 2 divided by 3 minus 2, then 2 divided by 3 minus 2 divided by 3, then 2 divided by 3 minus 2 divided by 3 minus 2, and so on. These are all finite expressions and can therefore be evaluated nicely. Don't worry, there's no division by 0. We're interested in seeing whether these finite expressions approach, the technical term is converge, to a certain number. Now note that every other expression starting from the first always equals 2. 
Every other expression starting from the second, however, gives us a different sequence. 2 over 3, then 6 over 7, then 14 over 15, and so on. These values are approaching the number 1. So if we take the meaning of this infinite fraction to be the limit as we look at these expressions that end after subtraction, then we get 2. But if we take the meaning to be the limit as we look at these expressions at that end after division, we instead get 1. So this one expression can be interpreted to mean two different things, but we can't actually get both of these interpretations simultaneously. If we try to include all of these truncated expressions, then we end up getting a sequence that bounces back and forth between things that are close to 1 and 2, and it doesn't actually approach either 1 or 2. Now you might ask, if we could interpret this infinite expression to mean either 1 or 2, could we interpret it to mean other things? Well, realistically no. If we look at the infinite expression again, then we see that it contains a whole copy of itself, right there. So if we let x denote the value of the whole expression, then we get that x is equal to 2 divided by 3 minus x. Now you can check there's only two values that will make this expression work, 1 and 2. And uh, speaking as someone who works with contained fractions a lot, I'd look at this and say it equals 1, but uh, that's the interpretation that's just more common. Anyways, uh, that's all for now because uh, I'm out of tea again. Bye!